name is Thomas Buchholz. I'm a forest analyst working for the University of Vermont and an eco-think tank called the Spatial Informatics Group. My research and consulting focuses on sustainable forest management, climate change and bioenergy systems in the US, Europe and Africa. I'm based here in Seattle, but I just came back from a trip to East Africa where I visited several bioenergy projects. Lately you might have associated bioenergy in Africa largely with large-scale conversions of forests to um, palm oil plantations, with um, biofuel plantations competing for land in Africa and being exported to Europe, um, questionable CO2 balances, and the list could go on forever. The two projects that I want to present to you today in the next couple of minutes are very different in how they implement modern bioenergy systems. One of them is about um, managing native bamboo plantations or bamboo stands in, in Kenya. One example I have here of a bamboo piece, thanks Max. The other one is about a social business and a young startup that um, delivers electricity to rural communities in East Africa. Both of these systems are very unique in such a way that they really try to scale the biomass they procure as well as the energy they deliver to the local context and are very careful in how they implement these projects in a sustainable scale. I hope you enjoy it. Nairobi, Kenya. The Abadjas are one of the last stretches of continuous forest cover in um, basically all of East Africa yeah. <laughs> to a large extent. Um, they provide a very critical habitat to elephants and the endangered black rhino. They also provide all the water supply, drinking water supply for the city of Nairobi. Um, and besides that, there are several hydro hydropower dams that are fed by rivers coming out of these forests. The interesting thing is that the Abadeas also have large swaths of natural stands of bamboo, which in historic times have been removed um, to and be replaced with timber, plantations, pine plantations, um, tea plantations, cattle grazing, agricultural productivity, um, ignoring their economic and environmental benefits. And it seems this is about to change. Next to me stands <laughs> Liam O'Mara, a Kenyan national, who um, has plans to um, start sustainable management of these natural bamboo plantations. And give us an idea of what you what you're up to. We want to develop Kenya's indigenous bamboo into a commodity, into a cash crop. Uh, that the government can, can grow and that local communities can grow and our principal market is energy. Uh, nearly 70% of Kenya's energy comes from firewood and charcoal and we want to create a sustainable source of wood fuel that until now hasn't really existed. Uh, people have traditionally grown eucalyptus in Kenya uh, as a source of wood fuel. We want to, to encourage people to grow an indigenous monoculture rather than a foreign monoculture. Uh, so if we can make a small success story in the Abadez, hopefully it will grow and hopefully we'll be able to do it on the Mau and in other places like Mount Kenya, uh, Mount Elgin, the Cherenganis and perhaps abroad in other African countries. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks to the movie director. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Liam Swirk also got featured in a 2010 New York Times article about current challenges and potential solutions for watershed management in Kenya. Just search for New York Times, Bamboo, Liam in Kenya. Liam's crew started to harvest bamboo six weeks ago and the first shipment should be at a tea factory now to dry tea. I'll keep you posted. The next stop will bring you to Uganda where I'm working with a young startup called Pamoja that um, installs biomass based electricity systems in rural communities. I will let the Pamoja guys introduce themselves, but here's a short concept sketch of their approach to provide electricity for biomass to rural Uganda. The system called the Green Plant and equipped with solar panels and a biomass gasifier delivers around 10 kilowatt and is fueled with agricultural residues and wood from agroforestry systems. Both of these biomass sources are provided by local farmers for cash. The electricity is then distributed to one of the now omnipresent telecommunication towers in rural Africa as well as to the local community. I'm 
standing here an hour west of Kampala, the capital of Uganda, in Tiboro village. This is a 300 household village, um, very typical for Western Uganda. A lot of agriculture is being done here. There's no natural forest cover left. Um, people grow cassava, corn, also some coffee for cash crops. They grow firewood. And um, living conditions in general are here fairly basic. There's no electricity connection here. And next to me stand two um, guys who want to change that. This is Pike Steinlund from Finland, and this is William Kantende from Uganda, who have um, co-founded Pamuja Clean Tech. Pamuja has installed this gasifier, which can produce electricity from biomass, and they will deliver electricity to this um, village. This is a pilot in Uganda, and Pike will explain a little bit more what the driver is of Pamuja. So, <coughs> Pamuja Clean Tech was founded in 2010. Uh, found, we founders, we met around the idea of uh, setting up a for-profit social business to sprout the use of renewable energy technology. Uh, we realized that there are a lot of interesting environmental technologies out there, but uh, we lack uh, business model, models that reach out to, to the people that actually need these type of technologies. So we work with uh, an inclusive business models to reach out to the base of the pyramid uh, markets. And William will explain a bit, little bit more about what actual impact on the ground this, this kind of technologies can have. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you look around here, the, the communities are now uh, really happy with our technology provided. Now we are targeting households and we are providing them with uh, lights for their children to read at night. So this is a clean energy. Then we are also looking at the <coughs> improving their social businesses where we have provided uh, charging centers where they are charging their phones and also we are providing a mesmering plant for this community to add value to their agriculture produce and also improve on their income and also add more to their social businesses. I'm standing here next to Shashank Verma who is from India and helps um, Pamoja to look into sustainable biomass supply for the gasifier. This can come from several sources. Agroforestry systems are one of them, and, and Shashank um, can tell us a bit on, on what that would mean. Right, so as you can see, we have these beautiful tree species. This is called Sesbania sesprin, and the, the farmer over here is already using an agroforestry system. So if you can look in the background, there's some banana plantation, but in the foreground, you have on these boundaries these beautiful trees, which is planted on the hedge. And these are great tree species. You plant them once and they and they within a year you can harvest them. They're nitrogen fixing and they provide great biomass source. So this is one of the tree species that we are considering in an agroforestry model, which uh, would provide us with a sustainable source of biomass. Is there any issue around um, competing with food production with these? Yeah, systems? not not at all. As you can see, there's you know bananas in the background and in the on the boundary. We have got these uh, biomass trees, these sesbenia trees, so there is no competition if you do it in a sustainable way, which is boundary plantations. Okay, thanks. Right, what's your plan here? <laughs> there's quite an interesting site, as you can see on top of the hill. There's a lot of degraded hill spot right there. Now, we think that's a perfect place to do a, a bit of plantation there for our biomass supply. The reason why we choose such a low productive site is because you cannot do any agriculture uh, farming there and also it's difficult to grow other tree species. So acacia and, and species like these would grow there and be able to sustain themselves and again provide us with a sustainable source of biomass for us. Cool, thanks. All right. The key here towards sustainability is as always scale. This bundle of firewood weighs 10 kilos. If you take seven of these bundles, you can convert them to up to 100 kilowatt hours of electricity, which is enough power to boost the standard of living of one African throughout one year significantly. If these systems are designed carefully, you can help lifting Africans out of devastating poverty, but at the same time strengthen the ecosystems that sustain us. If you want to learn more about bioenergy and biomass gasification, just search in the web for wood gasification. If you want to learn more about how to measure sustainability of these systems, just search for my name, Thomas Buchholz, Biology Sustainability. I hope
hope you enjoyed this video clip. See you next time. Yeah.